I'm Pratipa Astan, Professor from C. Balaji College of Nursing. Today we are going to discuss about the topic, Address of Alas. Overview of the my subject. Review of anatomy, definition of idosapalus, incident, etiology, classification, pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, management, and nursing care. First, we will see about the anatomy. Anatomy, bony skull forms the strongest covering and provides primary protection to brain. It's an expensive structure in infant and small children due to incomplete ossification of skull bones. Rigid in older children and adolescents. Meningitis. Meningitis are the membrane covering the brain and the spinal cord. This is the outer layer of the brain structure. In this, the dura mater, outer layer lining skull, and arachnoid mater contains blood vessels and subarachnoid space filled with CSF. Brain. Part of brain, the cerebrum. Vertical cortex, outermost layer of the brain cell. This lead deals with thinking and the voluntary muscles. The brain stem is between the spinal cord and the rest of the brain. Basic functions like breathing and sleep are control here. Medulla, sensory and motor tracking, breathing and cardiovascular centers regulating the consciousness of consciousness and arousal. Then moving on to spawns. Spawns, spawns deals with the sensory and the motor tracks. Midbrain sensory in the motor tract boosts of movements of the head, high trunk, response to the visual stimuli. The cerebellum is the base and the back of the brain. The cerebellum is responsible for coordination and balance. Diencephalon, thala, thala, thalamus, helps regulate motor function and maintenance of consciousness. Hypothalamus, releasing hormones and controls of ANS, epithalamus, pianal gland, secretes the melanin. Then this is the outer layer of the brain as well as the cross section of the brain. In the outer layer, you can see the parietal lobe, frontal lobe, temporal lobe, temporal lobe, and occipital lobe. In the cross section of the brain, we can see the cranium, cortex, cerebellum, dura, spinal cord, brain stem, and basal ganglia. Then moving on to the function organized of cerebral cortex, that is, this consists of frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and occipital lobe. First, we will see about the frontal lobe. So, responsible for the problem solving and judgmental motor function. Parietal lobe maintains the sensation and rating in the body position. Temporal lobes are involved with memory and hearing. Occipital lobes contain the brain's visual processing system. Then let's move on to the cranial nerves. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves. We will deep by one by one. The olfactory nerves, which deals with smelling. Then the optic nerve, which, which is the responsible for the visual. Then also more oculomotor nerve, which involves in the eye movements. Trochlear nerve also deals with the eye movements. Trigeminal nerve combined these nerves provide sensation to the skin of the face and also control the muscle of the mastication. Mastication means chewing. Abducens nerve that is deals with eye movements. Facial nerve, facial which lead, deals with facial expressions. Vestibular cochlear nerve will deals with hearing and balancing. Glossopharyngeal nerves, which deals with oral sensation, taste, and salivation. Vedas nerves, which deals with salivation. Accessory nerves, that is, will deal, leads to, deals with shoulder elevation and the hip turning. Hypoglossal nerve deals with hand movements. Then moving on to cerebrospinal fluid. First, we will see about the origin of CSF. CSF is a Ultrafilter of plasma that enters the basal side of the choroid epithelium by active metabolism, it is transformed into CSF and created, secreted the apical or vertical side of the epithelium. Function of CSF clear colorless fluid protects brain and spinal cord from physical and chemical injury. Carry over oxygen and glucose from the body to the neuron. The formation rate of CSF to be about 20 ml per hour or 500 ml per day in adults and children. 
the total CSF volume in the ventricles and the subarachnoid space is age dependent but reaches the adult volume of 150 ml by age of 5 years. Intracranial pressure. Infant 5 to 10 mm HD for child children, 15 mm HD. Then moving on to CSF circulation. And this CFS circulation, first CFS which produced by the choroid plexus in the ventricles. Then it moves to CSF flows through the cerebral aqueduct from third to fourth ventricle. Then CSF flows in the subarachnoid space by the lateral and the medial apparatus also into the spinal cord. Then CSF removes waste and provides buoyancy from, for, from with the subarachnoid space. At last, excess CSF will be observed by the arachnoid villi, which will drain into the superior sagittal sinus. Then we are moving to the disease condition, hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is a Greek word. It means hydro means water and cephalus means head. A condition resulting from imbalance in the CSF production and absorption. Next, move on to the incidence of hydrocephalus. 3 in 1,000 live births they have hydrocephalus, occurs in 80 to 85 percent of each children born with meningomyelosal. Meningomyelosal is a, this is, it's a congenital disease condition which deals with the spinal cord. It means the spinal cord won't be perfectly, that will be a opening or a immature spinal cord will be present. The outer layer of the spinal cord will be protruded outside. That is known as meningomyelosin. Now, moving on, the incidence is equally in male and hydrocephalus incidence is equally in male and female. Then moving on to etiology of hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is a condition of absorption series of circulation or impaired absorption. Just classified into congenital and upward. In congenital, which babies may have arillomelangiosal, may have hydrocephalus, this intrauterine infection that is DMV and toxoplasmonic virus, aqueduct stenosis, chiari malformation. These are the congenital causes. Then move on to acquired condition, intraventricular hemorrhage, tumor, trauma, series of infection, intracranial infection. And then developmental causes the type 2 chiari malformation. Chiari malformation is herniation of the cerebrum, major dropouts, and the fourth ventricle into the cervical spinal canal through enlarged Borman magnum, resulting in obstruction of CSF flow, commonly associated with meningomyelosal. Then, only daddy walk, dandy walk the malformation. Cystic expansion of fourth ventricle, partial or complete absence of cerebral vermis, and substituted obstruction of CSF flow. Then going on to the classification. Communicative hydrocephalus and non-obstructive hydrocephalus occurs when the CSF flows out of the ventricle and into the spinal canal, but it is not fully absorbed normally by the tissues or the surrounding the brain and the spinal cord. Sometimes this type of hydrocephalus corrects itself. Then moving on to non-communicating hydrocephalus or otherwise called obstructive hydrocephalus occurs when the CSF does not flow properly between or out of the brain ventricle because of an obstruction such as from a malformation or airway. Then moving on. The congenital hydrocephalus, congenital hydrocephalus, which is present at birth. Congenital hydrocephalus may be caused by physical problem. Yes, a flow or is made or observed by infection or trauma during the fetal development or by the teratogeny. It may be linked with other birth defect that affects the spine, especially open your tube defect. That is meningomyelosal. Acquired hydrocephalus. Acquired hydrocephalus, which travels at the time of birth or later, it can be caused by infections such as meningitis, bleeding, bleeding injury, or tumor. Then we are to expect you hydrocephalus to fix the condition of brain volume loss. This may be present at birth. It may be the result of failure in fetal development of the brain. 
brain also undergo destruction or atrophy from infection or a poor nutrition. Ventricles become large to fill the space where there is an absence of brain tissue. Then going to the pathophysiology, CSF will impact of how impact the absorption of CSF. This may lead to obstruction of flow through the ventricle system, which may lead to increasing accumulation of CSF, which leads to dilation of ventricles and cortex can be atrophy, which causes increase in CSF in the ventricle system, which may lead to compress brain against the cranium. If this occurs before fusion of cranial structures, can be enlargement of the skull, dilation of the ventricles. If sutures were previously closed, sagittal suture may be open because of this. Then this is pathology. Pathophysiology this is a normal CSF flow. This is a obstruction of CSF flow. In this picture, you can see correctly see whether it in the normal how it is there. In the hydrocephaly, it is expanded. Then moving on to the clinical manifestation. What is clinical manifestation? How we by seeing what we are how we are finding at the hydrocephalus in the brain fat early abnormal rapid air growth, the bulging fodolan, tense and non pulsating dilated sc scapal vein, separated suture, megumen sign that is cracked the pot sound or percussion of the skull near the junction of the frontal temporal and parietal bone. They, they have cracked the pot sound when we fell in the on percussion of the skull. Then they Thinning of the skull bone, overhead control. This then later in infancy, what are the signs and symptoms we will see? Frontal enlargement, depressed high. When the third ventricle dilates, the child can press with paranoid syndrome that is upgrade plasy with a normal vertical doll response or the setting sun sign. Paranoid symptom with lead. Lead retraction and increasing tonic downwards. The pupil sludgy, unequal pupillary response to light. Then other symptom of ir irritability, eye pitched to cry, lethargic child will cry when it spits up and rocked and fit when all allowed to lie still. Change in level of consciousness, opistotonus present, lower extremities fastest present, vomiting. Then uh, in childhood, eight day called awakening, blurred vision due to papillo edema, stabism may occur, irritability, the child will have irritability, lethargic, confusion, vomiting, horizontal diploma due to lateral rectal nerve plasy. Then moving on to diagnosis. How we will find this hydrocephalus? First, we will find with the help of history collection, then physical finding in infant, including the following vital signs, radicardia due to pressure on brain stem, systemic hypertension, altered respiration, and sometimes apnea. Then in head, head enlargement, that is head circumference will empty two centimeter per month in first six months. Disjunction of suture, dilated scapal vein, tension from tenale, Anterior fontanelle bulging in older children, large shear switches are closed by chronic increased ICP intracranial pressure will lead to progressive macrocephaly. Then Macman sign the air cracked pot sound is noted on percussion of the head in the open fontanelle. As long as the anterior fontanelle is open, either up to 18 months, the test will be positive. Trans illumination. Transverse sensing extends beyond 2.5 cm in frontal area or over 2 cm in occipital area is abnormal. Then moving on to eye, sunset eyesight. In infant, it is characterized of increasing intracranial pressure, ocular globules are elevated downward, the upper lids are retracted, and the white sclera may be visible above the iris. Papillo edema. If the increase in intracranial pressure is not treated, this can lead to optic atrophy and visual loss, failure of blood vessels, loss, and 
major or major sixth nerve plasy that the abducens is the sixth nerve. It's again to increase the ICP intracranial pressure. Then upper and lower SPD. In infant, increase in lymph node, spasticity preventively affects the lower limbs. The cause is stretched from the preventricular medial tract fibers by hydrocephalus in in children, unstable diet, this is re related to the spasticity in the lower extremity. Pramid sign in lower limbs due to stretching of the mid tract fibers. Exaggerated plantar reflex and deep tendon reflex of the lower limbs, along with increasing tone of lower limb. This is a magnitude resonance imaging of enlarged ventricle. Left side, we can see the enlarged ventricle, and the right is the normal ventricle. Then moving on to medical management. The goal of treatment in this client with hydrocephalus to reduce or prevent brain damage by improving the flow of serious stuff. Our main aim is to treat the infant with hydrocephalus to reduce or prevent the brain damage by improving the improving the flow of CSF. That is, we have to control the brain damage. That is our main and foremost goal. Then going on to the following medicine, what we are giving in the hydrocephalus. We'll move on to the first kind, first drug, that is diuretics. Acetoxalamine dose may be high as 100 ml per kg is given. Protosamine 1 mg kg to treat post-hemorrhagic post hydrocephalus to decrease Secretion of CSF at the level of the choroid plexus. Okay, in diuretic, these kind of drugs are given to treat the post hemorrhagic hydrocephalus to decrease the secretion of CSF at the level of the choroid plexus. Then going with the anti convulsant, interfere with the impulse transmission of cerebral cortex and prevent seizure. Then antibiotic culture and sensitive depends for shelving. Infections such as septicemia, ventriculitis, meningitis, or even as per the prophylactic treatment. Okay. Then we move on to the shunt. EVD, external ventricular drain. External ventricular drain or a short term solution to the hydrocephalus. The purpose of external ventricular drain is to divert fluids from the ventricles of the brain and allow for monitoring of intracranial pressure. Then moving on to shunt. The most common treatment for hydrocephalus is surgical insertion of dry, drainage system called a shunt. There are three types, four types of shunt. First, we will see by one level. Ventriculo peritoneal shunt, it's known as VP shunt. Then ventriculo atrial shunt, that is VA shunt. Lumbo peritoneal shunt, LP shunt, and ventriculo peritoneal shunt. In ventricular pleural shunts. Shunts will be generally consist of three components. And these are the three components in, components in the shunt. First, we will see an inflow catheter. This cat drains the CSF from the ventricles. It leaves the brain through a small hole in the skull, which then runs under the skin. Then the second is a valve mechanism. This regulates the pressure controlling through the stent trap tubing. It is connected to the catheter and lies between the skin and the skull, usually on the top of the ear or behind the ear. Then outflow catheter. This runs under the skin, moves the CSN from the valve to the peritoneal cavity, heart or the other drain system. One end of the tubing is usually placed in one of the brain ventricles. The tube is then tuned under the skin to another part of the body where the excess cerebral spinal fluid can be more easily observed, such as abdomen or a chamber in the heart. People who have hydrocephalus usually need a shunt system for the rest of their liver. And re-monitoring is required. See, this is the picture that the child is having the catheter. In this seen catheter, enlarged ventricles also seen the shunt from the 
it's from the ventricle, it moves to the abdomen. This is the feature of VB shunt, that is ventral peritoneal shunt. This is the procedure. See, the VP shunt and the VA shunt. VP shunt is ventricular peritoneal shunt, the other one VA is ventricular atrial shunt. Then going on to the complication of the shunts. Infection, most serious complication is septicemia. And septicemia, then bacterial endocarditis, then wound infection, meningitis, ventriculitis. Septicemia is infection, which is that the blood is blood is self infected. Then back endocarditis, the inflammation of the endocarditis due to this infection. Then then meningitis, infection of the meninges. Then ventriculitis, infection of the ventricles. Then malfunction. All strengths are subject to mechanical difficulties like mean plugging, separation, or migration of tubes. Endoscopic third ventriculostomy. In this procedure, an endoscopy is used to make a small opening in the bottom or bottom that is floor of the third ventricles to enable CSF fluid to flow freely through the previously blocked ventricles. See, in this, the hole is made over the top of the head, and yet the, the procedure is done by this way. Then, going on to the complication, as we see, intraventricular hemorrhage may occur, meningitis may occur, streptostomy failure can occur. Going on to the nursing management. Till now, we saw about, we saw about the anatomy of the brain, then CSF fluid, where it's origin, then the disease condition, even this is condition, hydrocephalus. In this hydrocephalus, we saw about the definition of hydrocephalus, then the pathophysiology of hydrocephalus, signs and symptoms of hydrocephalus, then the management, we saw about the medical management, surgical management, okay? Then about its procedure and the complication. Next, we move on to nursing care. How the nurse and the other health worker take care of it. First, we will see about the nursing care. First, assessment. History collection. Its circumference is the first and foremost we have to do in hydrocephalus to monitor whether the CSF fluid has increased or decreased or maintained. Okay. Occipitofrontal circumference is the view. It gives to measure that the nurse has to take, okay. Neurogenic and vital signs should be monitored. Check the front and If the front and are not closed, carefully observe them for any signs of bulging, tense, and separation. See, once again, I repeat this. Check the front and eyelids. If the front and are not covered, closed, carefully observe them for any signs of bulging, tense. Tenseness and separation. Assess for irritability, lethargic, seizures, feeding behavior, and vital signs. Monitor increase in intracranial pressure. Then, when we signs, uh, how we will see the intracranial pressure? Signs and symptoms of intracranial increase in intracranial pressure. Shallow breathing, headache, nausea, vomiting, increasing blood pressure, decreasing mental ability. Confusion about time, location, the place, then double vision, pupil that does not respond to the ch change in light, seizure, loss of consciousness, and coma. These are all the signs of in signs of increased ICD. Once again, I repeat this: shallow breathing, headache, nausea, vomiting, increasing blood pressure, decreasing mental ability, confusion about time, location, and the place, then double vision, pupils that do not respond to the Change in light, seizure, loss of consciousness, coma. Then preoperative care. What are the preoperative care we will do? Maintain nutrition. Prepare the child for diagnostic test that is CT and ventricular tapping. Preoperative preparation, explanation to the child and the family about the procedure. Skin preparation, safety, safety and psychological support to the child as well as to the family members. Then moving on to postoperative care. Continuous monitoring for Hardly should be done after the procedure. Question on unoperative site to prevent prevention pressure on shunt and pressure area. 
child is kept flat to avoid complication resulting from rapid reduction of icp intracranial pressure when ventricle size reduces too rapidly the cerebral cortex may pull away from the dura and tears the small interlaced veins resulting in subdural hematages this is so important post operative care once again i will repeat the post operative care continuous monitoring that is early monitoring should be done that is about the sucha area vital sign should be monitored early then the positioning should be seen then uh, next the second is positioning on unoperative side is so so important to prevent pressure on the shunt valve and pressure pressure areas okay the third is child is kept flat to avoid complications resulting from rapid reduction of icp see this i repeated some another time child is kept flat position so that is supine position child is kept flat to avoid complication because if positioning changes or head is elevated may leads to intracranial pressure so the child is kept flat to avoid complication resulting from rapid reduction of icp where the ventricular ventricular size reduces too rapidly the cerebral cortex may pull away from the dura and there's a small interlocking veins resulting in sub sub dura hematoma then in case of increase in icp surgeon may prescribe head head then elevation or allow the child to sit up enhancing gravity flow to shunt okay in the case of increase in icp the surgeon may prescribe head head end elevation or allow the child to sit up and enhance gravity flow through the shunt continuous assessment that is gcp so comma scale vital sign pupillary dilatation hypoxia this continually you should assess the so comma scale vital sign pupillary dilation and hypoxia observe for abdominal distension that is mostly in which for to denote whether it is peritone any peritonitis noted the post op paralytic ileus is present so observe for abdominal distension to rule out peritonitis and post operative paralytic ileus monitor for intake and output check intake and output check should be monitored correctly then we want to nutrition nutrition and nutrition we first we will see about the iv fluids first for the baby iv fluids are given so we should monitor the iv fluids and we should administer it correctly at the accurate time and we should follow all the principles of medication administration of medication okay then oral feeds after determining bowel sounds see after that only after the bowel sounds is determined only oral feed can be started then we then about the skin care skin care should be monitored because the, we should see the surgical area and we should to see the dressing and we should see whether the wound is healthy or not while the dressing so skin care is very important in a surgical procedure okay then we want to family support family support should be there we should support the support the family members especially the mother should be psychologically strengthen about the procedure and she should have a knowledge about the baby's disease condition about the procedures have been done and the complication everything we have to teach the parent about this condition about the hydrocephalus and the cell, about the vp shunt and the vp shunt mechanism and what can be how to maintain the vp shunt and the what are all the complication can be happen in the vp shunt and how to maintain the baby and how to we have to make the parents to be confident to maintain the baby in baby to prevent from further complication and we should explain them about the medication what should be done about the follow up care of everything to take care of the baby first we should make the family members to think that the baby is recovering 
and we and the baby should be frequently assessed if any signs of icp rise that the baby may have waiting for anything or surgical insertion area bleeding anything is emergency then make them be sure to come to the hospital immediately to avoid further complication for the baby and to treat the baby okay thus we will summarize my topic first we saw about the topic hydrocephalus so see how about the anatomy of the brain then we saw about the csf where it is origin then the flow of csf then we saw about the disease condition hydrocephalus in this this session we saw about definition of hydrocephalus then what are all the etiological factors that is acquired factors and this congenital and which is acquired factor then about that then pathophysiology we saw about hydrocephalus 